All right, let's get some perspective about what's going on. Pete McGuire joining us from XM. Pete, very good to catch up with you on a Monday morning. So um, the focus is still very much on central banks. We do have the RBA meeting tomorrow. Uh, also uh, the Kiwis on Wednesday. Um, that's ahead of some more data out of the state. So let's begin locally then. Expectations tomorrow, what's the RBA gonna do? Well, good morning, Andrew. 50 basis points, they we're off to the races and that seems to be the general mood across uh, uh, banks. And when you're looking at what the analysts are saying and everyone has got that sort of, um, uh, I think, realization, how aggressive are we going to be over the next couple of months if we, wonder we after we get October locked away? So. Yeah, it's a ratchet up and here we go. Yeah, you, you talk about being aggressive. We've had more Fed speak too over the past few days. They're certainly yeah. maintaining that, that hawkish rhetoric, aren't they? Absolutely. So that seems to be the general mood out of there, you know, certainly from the Fed, certainly from Eurozone and when you're looking at, you know, the UK. So it's all trying to manage that. And uh, as we move forward to Christmas, Let's hope that uh, it's going to be strong for retail sales and there's a little bit of comfort there for Main Street, but it may not materialise. We've just got to wait and see. It's going to be an interesting three months. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's perhaps an understatement, Pete. Um, yeah. New Zealand, uh, the RBNZ, what are you expecting there? Another 50 basis points also, mm. Andrew. So uh, have a look what's happened to their dollar and certainly our dollar. So yes, 50 and 50, and then we uh, lock that away and... It's going to be an interesting run up over the November, whether they want to replicate that, but it's a bit early to call. We've got a lot of things to get through for a red October. Yeah, a lot of things, a lot of data coming out of the States too this week, rounded off on Friday with that key non-farm payroll report. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, they're saying it could be not as strong as what we experienced in August. Uh, September is going to be a little bit less. So, you know, we're running it around about a tipping of 250,000. So. That would still keep the jobless rate at around about 3.7%. That's not too bad. It's, well, it's incredibly low when you're thinking about it. And uh, wages up around about 0.3 month on month in September. Yeah, we also get a reading of just how the US economy is traveling, I guess. We get more from the, as far as manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMIs. So, I mean, it's still that resilience there, isn't there? And particularly as far as the jobs market is concerned. Well, from the jobs market, yes, there certainly is resilience, but uh, we've just got to see how that all materialises with the PMIs and the general mood. You've still got inflation galloping, and I noticed that uh, we saw the OPEC. The, we're meeting there on Wednesday, and you've had crude jump 3% this morning or 3.4% for WTI. So it's going to, that's not a good sign for the, for the global economy. Good if you're a producer, but not too good if you're a... Uh, you know, you're on the other side of it, pumping gas into the car. Is that sort of expectations that OPEC is going to cut? Absolutely, Andrew. I think it's going to be closer to that million. I wouldn't be surprised even at 1.2 million. I know that's very bullish to the upside, but yeah, JP Morgan is saying half a million. So I think that, uh, yeah, one to one and a bit million will be cut. And as I said, you know, the market's really taken that on board and ratcheted up Brent and WTI couple of bucks already this morning. Pete, uh, currencies, of course, that volatility remaining. What do you get your eye on, particularly as far as, you know, those movements we saw on the pound in particular last week? Uh, wasn't it incredible? I mean, this time last week, who could have imagined it? But yes, we're back at that 111 for the pound. US dollar index has certainly given up a little bit of that hot steam from that 114.50, now running at, you know, that 112, nearly 113 sort of handle. So I think that that US dollar will continue uptick uh it's hard to put us you know do we take out those 911 numbers of 120 i thought this time last week yes but it might be a little bit harder to get there so it's a very much a day by day proposition i'm strong dollar everything else seems to be cratering and i think that that will continue over the next matter of weeks we've got a midterm andrew in a month as well yeah absolutely and those geopolitical risks remaining um pete also yeah. with the prospect of a global recession have you what do, you, what do you make of the precious metals at the moment? They've been held underwater. I notice silver and gold are still, I think there's plenty of upside for them. A lot of retail sales as far as physical is strong demand. So I think that that will continue as far as the paper markets, you know, derivatives. 
it seems to be very, very soft. And well, when I say soft, we just can't seem to get above 1700 for gold or above 20 bucks for silver. But when it runs, it'll run hard. And I think the best time is ahead for gold and silver. I think there's plenty of uptick there.